Um, I want to introduce you to a new friend, um, a friend of Aidan, Boisel, Cuthbert and Hild, maybe even at one point Wilfred. This friend, Aeto, was a child during a new political era. He was a pupil in a pioneering school under Aidan. He was a brother within monasteries and shouldered servant roles um, in the physical construction of them, as well as in their leadership. Eta was a man living a missional and monastic life, called to wider responsibilities across Northumbria as bishop. Eta was one of the original 12 boys trained by Aidan, in fact the only one named uh, with certainty by Bede. He was trained to bring Christ's word to the Northumbrian people as Aidan had done through love and example. Ada was sent to Melrose by Aidan to be its first abbot. And Finnan, the second abbot of Lindisfarne, sent Ada to Ripon and he took young Cuthbert with him uh, to serve as guest master. I tell you that I'm introducing you to him because I I didn't know him very well, I confess. Um, he was a name, a tricky name to pronounce indeed. Um, but I had always thought of uh, Hild uh, as the one who held things together following the Synod of Whitby with her wisdom and her integrity. It turns out that she had a colleague, one who served alongside her in that. And after the Synod of Whitby, Aete became the abbot of Lindisfarne after Coleman's suggestion, Coleman being the third abbot of Lindisfarne. Subsequently, Aete became bishop of an even wider defined region, but still centred on Lindisfarne. He was a constant during this time. Following even further changes in the way the bishoprics across the country, the whole of the Angles people was divided up. He then swapped appointments, quite cheekily, with Cuthbert who had recently been um, ordained with reluctancy as a bishop. So Aeta became Bishop of Hexham, with Cuthbert remaining near his beloved Lindisfarne. Aeta died on the 26th of October 686 from a disease that was passed on from person to person, um, the disease of dysentery, and he was buried at Hexham. Bede describes this new friend of mine as the gentlest and simplest of men. In manner and simplicity of life, he was like his mentor, Aidan. Indeed, Bede encourages us to look at the pupil to see the formation of character by the teacher and vice versa. So within the writings and maybe the stories that we're familiar with, we may look to Aidan to see Aeta and also look to Aeta's own pupil, uh, famous Cuthbert. It's a continuous line of teaching in the transformational learning experience of being trained in the simple rule of the Ionian monks, the monks from Iona, trained and formed under Columba. We see Aeta's loyalty in his actions he was a man who brought unity wherever he could. As a researcher, a writer I've come across um, recently studying my new friend, and her name is uh, Michelle Ziegler. She's a microbiologist and a historian. What a brilliant balance of uh, science and humanities. And she writes, 
Ata's career that spanned the entire lifetime of the Irish mission in England from the earliest days of Aden until the switch to the Roman Rite had been completed in the 680s. His career, joining Lindisfarne in about 636, he lived for 50 years within its monastic system. 50 years. As I say, I know and love the stories of Hild. Um, how did I miss this man? How did I miss this servant? She also describes him as the real worker of Aidan's mission, who did whatever had to be done. So why introduce you to Ata now? Well, I came across recently this quote from Henry Nouwen. He says, Let me die to the desire to choose my own way and select my own desire. You, Lord, do not want to make me a hero, but a servant who loves you. Eata could have been a hero. We could have many pilgrimage sites for him. Uh, his name may be more widely known, more familiar to tongue to pronounce. Yet he maintained his servanthood. And that seems to be his goal. Because of his servanthood when faced by situations particularly beyond his control. Why introduce him now? Well, he lived servant-heartedly amidst much of the upheaval that was framed by a pandemic. The plague of 664. We might call it plague 664 in the way that we call the coronavirus, COVID-19. This plague had huge repercussions for the church and indeed is a parallel for us as we face the challenges of COVID's impact upon society and our response as those seeking to live with availability and intentional vulnerability. So we frequently recall the Synod of Whitby as the pivot, the pivot point of the outworking of Aidan's mission in Northumbria. Ata shouldered the task of leading the monastic community forward within the changes and challenges of a post Whitby Synod, the restructuring, increases in the political dynamics and responsibility, all within an era of plague. Indeed, his friends Cuthbert and Boisel among many, both caught the plague, most likely through giving succour and comfort to others. Cuthbert recovered, living on with an affliction, long plague. Boisel did not survive. The impact across the whole country meant that many of the newly converted to Christianity were dying. There are parallels for us in our own era-defining pandemic. Ata's obedience gave him resilience in purpose and calling as he accepted roles of leadership of Abbot and then Bishop of Lindisfarne and Hexham, stabilising the church after Whitby and as the pandemic raged on. Ada's example enables us to see that an ongoing relinquishment of our lives into God's hands can bear much fruit. Ada will be our companion through Easter. Ada mentored by Aidan, both of them inspired by the life and servanthood of Jesus. So may we, in companionship with one another and with my new friend, do that this Easter. Bless you.